Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Poison Akami here, me, myself and I back at it again with another video and today's video is going to be a tutorial video on how to protect and play without your subs. The reason why I said play and protect is because it kind of goes both ways and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, so today's video is actually provided by uh, the comments of this user here that actually requested for um, this to happen, this tutorial, and I thought it was actually a very good idea. I, I didn't think I actually talk about subs much on the YouTube channel uh, in terms of how to play without them. Um, but when I was thinking to myself, when I was making this video, I thought, well, playing without them and protecting them are near enough the same thing. You, well, if you want to protect your subs and play without having to waste them, um, you know, there is ways to go about it. Uh, I'm actually going to be making a part two on a, on a further in-depth uh, guide to subbing, so be sure to drop a like on this video, and if this video gets a lot of likes, then I will be sure to make another part to this subbing video so you, can know, you guys can know more on how to use them efficiently. Anyways, let's get with the uh, tutorial. How to protect your subs or play without them. So when I say protecting and play without them, because the reason why you would protect them is because you're not using them. And when you're playing without them, guess what? You cannot use them still. <laughs> because the reason is, is because they're not there available to you. So protecting them and playing without them, you're pretty much in the same scenario in both situations. Now I've carefully chosen Sarada, Madara here and Itachi because I feel that like these are very good characters to demonstrate what uh, some of the reasons I like to do. There are other characters that Excel and other gimmicks and I'm going to go through that now. So the first method. So the first method that I actually like to talk about is actually using aggression as a way to defend yourself. Sometimes they say that offense is the best defense and simply all you want to do is you know when you are low on subs and your opponent is dashing at you so if I turn on the opponent here you know just doing a case of this you know just just to make sure that you're you know you're not getting hit just you know jump over chakra dashes switch tech you know, doing things like this, because obviously you're spending time hitting them. That's all you're doing. You're hitting them. You're, you're not getting hit yourself. So, even though he's trying to attack me, it's the best way to avoid the pressure. So another way is to actually not get hit by pain. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, using aggression. Now, demonstrating this against a, a CPU is hard, so I've actually got some examples in fights that I'll be showing later on in the video. I actually got some uh, some uh, good examples in some PMs I did with some players um, that will actually further demonstrate how or why you should do what I'm telling you. So another way to actually um, go through this is actually by using the character's assets to protect yourself. So when you're on no subs or you're trying to protect your subs and you're being approached or dashed, using character's strong suits is the best way to go about it. So Madara with his range of the Susano arms and his extra stun is very helpful. And Sarada second hit. Obviously when you see players like Pleiko or anybody else who uses Sarada, um, when they're on their subs, what they will tend to do is that they will tend to throw Jutsu in your face or whatever, get the distance, and they will throw a kunai like this. If you ever watch Playco's gameplay, he'll make use of this to protect himself. And then when he sees the opponent's getting close, he might just buffer it or something and go to the next character and start ninja moving. The reason why you make use of Sarada's second hit is because it's kunai that flies across and does damage. Even if he were to, uh, to chakra dash, which I will try to show off now. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but if you know for the, for the few that doesn't know this, as you can see, he, he's trying to chakra dash me, and he is unable to because this is a solid form of defense. Now, as long as your timing is right, that will work. Now, obviously, this isn't just for Sarada. This goes for other characters like Mizukage Mei. You do her IC three. You know, you hit circle three times, and then she does the the water bullets. You jump, cancel, and then you repeat. Uh, it's a very good way of defending yourself without actually using resources because this this is free i'm not using any resources whatsoever just obviously you gotta make sure to change it up by you know hollow stepping in between each one for in kunai for extra damage perhaps you know just doing things like that or buffering with it to force them this basically buys you extra time to create distance so this that's another way another way to actually defend yourself during these times is to actually use items so paper bombs i say is usually the best way now i don't have any um uh, kunai bags but using kunai bags is also good because it just provides little extra bits of stun when they're comboing you or whatever that's if they get you in a combo or in the neutral game they might try and block it and it keeps them there for like a second longer than they'd like to be but when someone is approaching you what i tend to do is this so if i turn off the ninjutsu so, you know, this. Literally just simple as jumping a lot and doing that. 
that's literally like my main way of going about it. But then what this does is that it creates distance between me and him. And I'm able to buy time to get my get my subs back. This is a very good scenario. I only recommend doing that scenario if you have no subs. If you have no subs, I feel like that's the best time to do that type of thing. Um, when you have subs, there's no point. Uh, because, like I say in my coaching videos, the best time to use your paper bombs and to make the most use of them is when your storm gauge is up so you can get strike back. But you do actually see me demonstrate this in some fights up ahead, in the clips up ahead, so you, you'll, you'll better see my explanation for this in, in a fight format. So I feel this option is actually quite obvious, and I think I would have spoke about it briefly um, in terms of how it can help you defend in the tutorial for it, but basically just switch teching. A simple act of switch teching like this, which is actually the reason why I chose this team. Just doing this a lot is basically your your key to um, to defending yourself, you know? And not only is it a good defense, but it's offensive because you're doing damage whilst doing all this. Obviously, my opponent isn't, you know, blocking or anything or trying to defend himself, but if he were trying to dash me constantly, so if I just, again, turn on this again, I'm putting him in a situation here where he has to actually cancel his chakra dash. You know, if you know he has to cancel his chakra dash, he cannot. He cannot approach me this way. This is the best way for me to defend myself. Using upper assets like the tilt, so I can still do damage while saving resources. If he's low on chakra, I can land a combo like that or whatever. It's just doing switch tech. Not only is switch tech jutsu the way to go about it, but doing switch tech chakra dashes like that. As you can see, he got close, but Sarada dashed at him like this, and it's by his time. It's basically like a little, like a football tackle or a rugby tackle if you're from the United Kingdom. Um, you know, way of going about it. So whenever they try and chakra dash me, I do this a lot. As you can see. By throwing out your supports as chakra dashes, it keeps them away. So actually another way to actually go about it as well, to defend yourself, is to purposely chakra dash clash with another, um, with the other um, uh, person. So I'm actually going to waste my subs on purpose, and I'm going to chakra dash whenever he chakra dashes me. See, by chakra dashing as well, I'm, I'm able to defend myself here. As you can see, I'm not using subs or anything. I'm only chakra dashing when he chakra dashes. If he chakra dash backwards, that's fine. But you see, the reason why you force a chakra dash clash is because um, you're you're both you're both in this stun animation where you can't do anything. Both of you aren't doing anything at all. This is extremely helpful. So I just do this. And I purposely do that on purpose. Or I will force a chakra dash clash with my support and jump away with my other one if I want distance from my enemy. But sometimes just forcing chakra dash clashes like this, it stuns you both. So why not use it, right? As long to be honest, this actually works like logically if you think about it, this works best if you have more chakra than the opponent. So right now I have a full bar chakra where pain only has like a part. So if we were to keep dash clashing every single time. Like he's got another like what seven chakra dashes left in a chakra bar. So if we if we chakra dash clash the next seven times, I still got that leftover chakra um, to do like switch check and approach him and break his guard and pressurize him. Because by those seven chakra dashes, my subs should come back. So ch forcing chakra dash clashes are another good way of actually defending your subs. Okay, so another way to actually defend yourself on no subs is actually simply just by walking and blocking. Now, obviously, I show this in my walking and blocking tutorial. You're going to notice that other tutorials kind of come together in this one. So just a simple act of just doing this or just very fundamental. So this is where like easy fundamentals come in. Like, you know, just doing stuff like this because he gets he gets some um, dash stun like he gets like stun get a dashing into my block force things like that or you can make him run into into this like simple just walking and blocking away like this is good and also this is infinite your guard doesn't break when you do this and if you want proof of this if you haven't seen it be sure to check my um my blocking tutorial where I actually demonstrate this. This is a very important tool. I think what you're gonna realize in this video that other tutorials kind of mesh into this tutorial because it's all it, like the fundamental importance. But yeah, simply just by doing this, 
and just jumping away fundamentally is very important. As you can see, it really helps out. Okay, so another example is actually to counter, but only when you have resources. And an example of this is basically when you are being hit like this, if I'm going to counter, I want to do it when I have a support ready so I can do this, so I can counter parry. To counter parry, literally the only way you do that is by counter and then switching. So it's, uh, it's counter the oncoming opponent and then switch as the counter lands. You can see the timing of it on my controller, so I'll demonstrate it one more time. We I mean, that's just a, st a standard counter. counter. There you go. And then you can do something like that as a way to punish your opponent. Now, the reason why I say it only with resources is because if you whiff the counter, so like say if you do a counter, like you think they're going to chakra dash, and you know, I do it too early, switching to moderate there makes me safe. Switching is an extremely safe um, mechanic in this game. So by doing this, because if you, if you counter, you're left open for a combo like so. Like, you're absolutely screwed. But, if you counter and switch instantly like so, and do the movement cancel, see this is where the movement cancel tutorial comes in. If you haven't seen that, I suggest you watch it. You'll find the other tutorials mentioned to this, I said this before, and, and doing this. What some people do, which is very risky, is, is countering with the new character. So the counter, and then they will try to ninja move and counter again with the brand new character, which I don't like doing too much. Um, you know, I feel like doing, yeah, so a lot of people, they will, they will try to do that, which I can see why people want to do that, but um, I feel like just uh, switching, so. And doing this, like, like moving and blocking, is a very good way to go about it. So just simple countering and switching is the best way for you uh, to, to, to do that. Another way is very similar to switch tech, but it's just throwing your opponents like that. So if you have your, um, your uh, no, it's not your opponents, but throwing your supports. So if you have your supports ready, sometimes and if you're low on chakra, just do stuff like this, you know? By doing this, it allows you to buy time to get Chakra to, you know, further disrupt. But yeah, you see, by doing that... It always helps. And then doing that as well. So this is switch tech that doesn't involve Chakra. Switch tech that isn't Chakra-based and is fundamental-based switch tech. So by doing this, like so, I'm, I'm able to defend myself. Like so. So very similar to the switch tech one, it's just doing it without chakra. You use these in the cases where you have no chakra. And another example is actually using the gimmicks of some characters. So very similar to Sarada and Mei. Um, Utakata obviously has these bubbles that linger around. And um, the tracking on them is quite good at certain angles as well. Only at specific angles. This will get explained more for Utakata in a, in a guide. But as you can see, when I'm throwing all of these out, I'm able to keep them at bay. Now, this is very good because this is long range pressure, zoning pressure. So, if I were to just basically force him to block now, I'm keeping him at bay, or he'd be forced to ninja move. Now, if he tries to chakra dash me, all I would do is counter the chakra dash and then go to the next character or counter parry or whatever. You can combine this zoning with jutsus like I just did. And just by the simple act of doing this is very good. But yes, characters like Utakata are very good at providing pressure like so. Switching during these moments as well and closing in on your opponent is very good. So for you long range character players or char uh, you know, the players that like to play the long range characters, using gimmicks like this and like this and then, you know, all of this stuff, well, you will find extremely helpful. And then you can do stuff like Daedra's Infinite. Obviously not on Armor Break. For some reason, it doesn't work on Armor Break. But yeah, this is a very helpful uh, tool to use. It's just by using the zoning. But obviously, like I said, be sensible when, uh, when you are using it. Because, you know, they can just like Chakra Dash you. 
So yeah, already he, he can psych you out like that. So... Using Utakata's Lingering Bubbles, I was able to stun him there. I actually do have some fights uh, showing examples with um, Utakata and Mizukage, so you should be able, you should check that out. Also, another thing is actually making use of Cover Fire. So if you have Cover Fire characters that provide good stun, do this. The reason why you do that is because it has a lot of stun attached. As you can see, he's trying to attack me, and he's going to find it difficult. And if your supports are both ready, ready during this, you can switch to one of them and then continue your pressure. Like so. And then you can revert to the zoning that I was teaching you earlier with switch tech. So you can argue that long range characters do this very well, actually, compared to many characters in the game. But um, yeah, this is a very good way of going about it. Just forcing your... Um, because people didn't really expect the... Um, you know, the cover fire. So forcing it like that, and then using the gimmicks alongside of it, creating traps like this, a very good way to go about it. That's pretty much all the examples I have in terms of protecting your subs and uh, playing without subs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some clips of me playing without subs, and I'm going to just talk over the clips and actually demonstrate how this is helpful and how you could use it. And it's different scenarios, so I'm pretty sure if you see the scenarios of the fights, you'll see how they help you. As always, it's been your boy Poison Akami, Matane. So as you can see in this clip here, if you're getting comboed and you're running out of subs, so what I would do here is that in this scenario, I actually use aggression to waste his resources whenever he approached me to then better myself. Uh, by doing the aggression, as I said earlier, is a good way to defend yourself. So as you can see, I'm taking away his subs and over time, my subs will return. In this clip here, you can see that I'm using aggression still, but I then change the pace and get defensive. When I see, when you see that I actually jump back, I actually use switch tech jitsu to then defend myself. Sometimes your opponents do not expect this. Here is another beautiful example of passive aggressive by me to get my subs back. But when my opponent realizes that my subs are back, the then the tide then changes, and he actually uses good fundamental defense of walking and blocking and jumping away purely just to waste um, just to waste my resources, so I can't chakra dash him anymore, and he gets the subs back. Very clever. Here I actually do a thing that I like to call empty chakra dashing. Empty chakra dashing is when you chakra dash but you do not follow up with any combos or any attacks. This is a very good way to chakra dash safely and block af afterwards whilst wasting your opponent's subs. As you can see it's the reason why I won right here. Here in this clip is a very good example of how just using leader switching alone is a very good way to actually uh, defend yourself and your subs. As you can see my opponent here does a reckless jitsu but then corrects his mistake by leader switching and jumping away. This is a good way for him to buy time to get his subs back. Take note here how I'm using Utakata's gimmicks and uh, good priority on tilt to actually waste my opponent's resources whilst getting damage and not using a single sub in this scenario. This is a very good way to, uh, can you, to continue doing aggression whilst defending yourself. I haven't used a single sub and I'm getting damage off at the same time whilst wasting his chakra. Now this part of the clip, my opponent sees that I finally use my subs, so what he does is the same as what I did. He doesn't use the subs and he waits patiently. He uses his character knowledge on my characters to punish me at the correct time. This is where character knowledge and knowing all the characters of the game comes in handy. Here is another example of using paper bombs to create the distance and then you see me proceed to use aggression and a mixture of switch tech to do passive aggressive play to change the pacing and to change the distance between me and my opponent and until my subs come back.
In these two scenarios here, me and my opponent use counters as a good way to save ourselves. But notice when we do counter that we actually have resources available. By that, I mean we have our supports to switch into unless we mess up. This here is a bad example of countering when you have no subs because I have no resources to switch into, no leader switching characters or anything. So I counter and I'm left open. This actually allows him to proceed to punish me as I try to waste my chakra here and lose this round. Another quick bad example of what not to do when you have no subs is to leader switch in the air. When your new character comes in, they are actually unsafe since they cannot block for a couple of seconds. So try not to do this when you have no subs.